That's all I'm supposed to back. A good marriage is a marriage where two people are happy. <laughs> they're happy, they are in a godly relationship, and they're actually happy in that marriage. They are building a happy marriage, or they're together and they're both happy. And that's technically in the world, that's what the world knows as a good marriage. Now, what are the steps? Does it mean that because you are good friends, automatically means that you are going to be good, a good couple? Welcome everyone to our channel. If you are new here, you're very welcome in our midst. We are very happy to have you. We are a group of single people and a few married people. So this channel is um, meant to encourage singles to talk about marriage, um, relationship, what to do before marriage, how to go about getting married, and um, what not to do. How to find the right partner and how to marry a Christian, godly man, how to go through the right process and build a Christian home eventually. That's actually our objective. Um, I'm a mentor and I talk about marriage, relationship, that's my, that's my forte. So but today I have, uh, again, we're here for another podcast and we have our guests. Joshua. Joshua and then I have Obina here and of course you know my name, my name is Princess and um, I'm the host today, they're going to be uh, bringing their own wealth of experience, knowledge and, and their thoughts about this topic and without wasting too much time, we'll jump right into the video, it's titled, can a good marriage start with a good friendship, can a good marriage start with a good friendship, so um, I'll start today with um, Owen and uh, what are you talking about? Yeah. Uh, well, I'll say that yes, sure, a good marriage can start off with a good friendship. Uh, I guess the question, there are various things that now comes, that will come up. The question is, what kind of friendship are we talking about? I mean, are we talking about it within a Christian setting or just general? In general, mm -hmm. people are looking People can be people can even cohabitate for 20 years and not be married. Yeah. It's still friendship. Good friendship. Right, that's true. So if it's that one, okay, that, that one is on its own. Yes. It's, in fact, some people can even be good friends. And when they marry, it's as if it becomes cat and dog. It's like see yeah. people like <laughs> you know they are their throats. <laughs> because the question is, what there's something now, this is my own personal conviction. After listening to different people talk about it and watch real life marriages, yes. there's something about marriage that matter if you even if you don't believe in God, yes. it will make you rethink that there's something about about, about marriage that is divine. Yes. Because you see people, very good friends, male and female good friends, once they just go to that altar or something and officially get married, yes. problems just start. start. This they've been oh, friends for years. Yeah. Problems. So for me personally, I think marriage is like on a class on its own. Friendship is a factor, true, good, yeah. it's a given. But I don't think just being good friends is a, a conclusive or a positive indicator of a good marriage. Okay. That's where I guess I would, I would like to look at it. Okay. And again, if we now come, if you're talking about like the Christian setting, yeah. it, that's this way that becomes dice in the sense that when that friendship now gets to that angle of, okay, well, <laughs> we're looking at maybe taking it to marriage level. I guess that's where both parties need to now be very careful so that they don't overstep the so-called bounds of friendship before the marriage. Yes. I, I guess that's that's, that's from for, for now. That's from your own point of view. Okay. Yeah. So do you have any thoughts about that? Yeah. I mean, I think in the world there is so much cliche about marry your friend, right? Yeah. Yes. And and people say that for a particular reason. And so we have to know what friendship really is. Mm -hmm. Many people don't have a real understanding of what friendship is. I remember I was helping somebody out to move and the person was like, oh, you are not even my friend and you are helping me out. Mm. And I said, yeah, I mean, I'm not your friend, but I'm helping you out. And the yeah. person was kind of very stunned by the fact that I accepted the fact that I wasn't their friend and I was still helping mm -hmm. them out. And because for me, friendship, I don't take friendship lightly. 
-hmm. Friendship means a lot to me. Mm -hmm. It means that I have to invest in that relationship. So I don't have so many friends, but I do have a number of people that I will characterize as acquaintances. Yep. And so for me, friendship is having similar interests, making that dedication to the other person is somebody that you are interested in, mm -hmm. not only in, in the things that you do together, but also in their life as well, as well. So if I define friendship that way, then it could be a good predictor of good marriage in the sense that the idea of marriage, mm -hmm. albeit being divine, there is still that element of developing interest in somebody mm -hmm. and making intentional decision that this is the person I want to be with. And so when this topic came out, I went, I did a bit of search on Google to see if there are any scientific studies about um, friendship being a predictor of of marriages, mm -hmm. right? And you could talk about friendship before marriage and friendship in the marriage, right? Yeah. Some people have the opportunity to be friends before they marry, yes. which would probably help them getting into their marriage. Mm -hmm. But even if you are you're not friends with that person before you marry, then you have to make that intentional effort for the person to become your friend yes. during their marriage. And that would mean that learning the person's interest mm -hmm and doing that. So I came across one study that was done in 2015, I think, in the University of British Columbia, yes. one of their family studies, I think, National Bureau of Economic Research, and they were looking at well-being of marriages yes. in general between people who are not married and people who are married, right? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And they found out that people who are married, yes. generally on the general level, have a higher well-being than people who are single. But beyond that, they went more into this friendship kind of help in the well-being of people who are married and they found out that people who are friends or consider their partners to be their best friends mm -hmm. generally have a higher level of satisfaction in their marriage yeah. than the people who were who weren't married and another thing that they even said if the people were people of faith then and they are friends they call them super friends their own was even more higher mm -hmm. in terms of satisfaction in the marriage and the overall well-being of the couples than people who aren't but the point is not that it's no causation that's what we need to get clear yeah. it's a predictor of it it doesn't mean that if you are friends with somebody it will automatically lead to satisfaction in marriage like bro I was saying it doesn't always do that there are many intervening factors that will happen you start to despise the person because you're already married to the person and, but there is that intentionality to be able to keep the friendship full in the friendship. Yes. And so I, I would say there is some level of correlation between being friends in marriage or friends and good marriage, but mm -hmm. it's not causation. It doesn't automatically follow that once you are friends with somebody then you have a sweet marriage or you will have that. And again, you also come back to what we define as good marriage, right? Yeah. If it's yes. just general happiness level, mm -hmm. then yeah, but sometimes it, could, it should be more than that for a yes. Christian. Happiness is not the ultimate goal, right? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. It's um, it's building something that glorifies God that and so nice. that is something that yeah. So, yeah yeah those are good inputs yeah so um well if if you ask me I believe that well great as a young person I always wanted to marry my friend mm -hmm. someone that I can call my friend right because I didn't want to marry a stranger right because mm -hmm. if I married a stranger then I have to study the person I have to know the person. Mm -hmm. I have to doesn't mean that I know all my friends in in and out right but at least the friends that I know in quotes the few friends that I have that I really call my friends I know them to a certain extent in the sense that I know what they want and I know what they cannot stand mm -hmm. so I know their limits and I know where I should stop and not push it again okay so I wanted to marry my friend because um, over time we would have built a relationship and of course those I call my real friends are Christians like me. Uh, we share the same beliefs, we share the same goal of getting to heaven and sometimes we get to talk a lot about um, whenever we're talking we relate it back to, uh, to our Christian faith and how God has helped us through life. You know, so um, I believe that the years, or well, that friendship, that that friendship, not just camaraderie, camaraderie, like mm. like my comrade, like that mm. really, that you know, colleagues, not 
colleagues. You, you see, yeah. it's, not, it's not colleagues. It's not a colleague level kind of relationship. Yeah, yeah it's not a colleague level kind of relationship. It's the kind of relationship that is closer. I can. Yeah. It's not camaraderie. It's mm. this kind of relationship where we can tell ourselves deep secrets and we don't. We are loyal to one another. Mm. So that loyalty is there. So it's this kind of friendship because some people don't understand the difference between acquaintances and mm. friends. Some people can be your acquaintances, but they're not your friends. Mm -hmm. The Bible says a, a friend should be able to give their lay their life down for their friends, right? Mm -hmm. Something like that. But Jesus, Jesus was saying that friends should lay down their lives yeah, yeah. for them. And this is the definition of friendship according to Jesus. Good friends should be able to lay down their lives for their own friends. And it says that there are friends that stick closer to you than even a brother. Proverbs. Yeah, in Proverbs. So... <laughs> If you are that kind of friend, that very close friend of mine, I think that we should be able to weather some storms together because um, you don't want to hurt me. You're my friend and our relationship means a lot to you and you don't want to hurt me. Mm -hmm. So that was my own concept of French, of marriage. So mm -hmm. I wanted to have to have built that kind of friendship. Because mm -hmm. not a friendship of I go to your house and sleep over, no. But that kind of friendship where we can talk, we can share our mind, you can share our weaknesses. Mm -hmm. You can be weak and not feel that. Mm -hmm. Because you have shown your weakness to me as a man, right. that I'm going to look down on you. That if he hurts you, if you need to cry, you, you should be able to cry. Like, And that doesn't make you less of a man to me. Right? It just shows your vulnerability. Mm -hmm. And it shows that, okay, you trust me enough to open up your painful heart. And to know that you can share that deep pain with me, that, that means a lot to me. You know, and I'm not the kind of person that looks down on people generally. And so I believe that people should people should first of all define what friendship is all about. So that they're not jumping into thinking that, okay, uh, I want to marry my friend. But this person that you said you are marrying, is this person really your friend? Does this person think that you are their friend? Uh, that's the starting point. So does it mean that every friendship will lead to a good marriage? No. No. Because, at least I know those, some two campus ladies that say that because they are friends, that they can't live together. Because if they live together, it's going to destroy yeah. their friendship. You might see their back end. No, she just felt it's going to destroy their friendship. Yeah, but we're talking about friend. two ladies. Yeah, you will see their person's no, back see, end. No, the, the, the thing is this. I guess you made the point. You said that the definition of friendship, I think both of you made a similar talk about the definition of friendship. Hmm. Now, because of because what we are discussing is about male female dynamic here. Yes. And I want to just throw something in while we we'll continue, in the sense that now this is not only not only based on my observation, mm -hmm. but also based on other people's observation. Yes. Generally speaking, there are many women that are just sponges. They keep taking. They don't give. <laughs> they don't give. I can tell you that. In different ways, there are some people, and I've tried this thing out. I've tried it out. There are some people, if you call them, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. they are so happy for your call. They don't know that you actually sacrifice. When before calling them, you say, even if this call is going to take one to two hours, mm -hmm. I'm going to sacrifice it and just listen to this person. Mm -hmm. And they will talk and talk and talk. Mm -hmm. But these people won't even text you. Mm -hmm. Number one, that's not friendship. Yeah. It's one way. It's one way. Mm -hmm. Another way one has to look at it is again, for example, at this, I don't know what has happened in the world. Maybe it's just in my eyes. When I was much younger, mm -hmm. it was a general understanding, even when we were young, when we were going to visit maybe an aunt or a, a woman, so, you know, a mother. So when we were going, we were going with the expectation that when we get there, even if there is no food in the house, at least the woman will offer us water, yes. we'll drink water, and, you know, calm down and uh, this and go out to pool. But these days, I find that it's so hard for even women to give anything. Hospitality is... Hospitality is so, when we're talking about this whole friendship kind of level, this is before marriage stuff. Mm -hmm. I think people should really sit down and think, what is friendship? Mm -hmm. Because it's yeah. not just, oh, my chat partner, the yeah, person yeah. I gossip or talk with. <laughs> that, that's not friendship. Yes. I was reading somewhere that, said, that says that it's... It's better for you to choose someone that you can weather this more or less weather the storm with. Yes. That's one aspect of friendship. You mm -hmm. choose yeah. someone that even if there's no money or anything, you know that person is there. Yeah. That present. That is friendship. And I and I and I guess that's why many marriages are in trouble. Mm -hmm. Because even if they were friends before, 
so-called friends, quote and unquote, those so-called mm -hmm. friends before they entered into marriage. Mm -hmm. Once they enter into marriage, marriage as a girl, <laughs> bringing out the, the real you, know, bringing out the real oh, things. Well, yeah. To test the friendship. Now, yeah, when that thing comes, it, it becomes learned that that's, I guess that's when people say, Oh, I never knew you were like this. No, mm -hmm. the person was like that all along. You just didn't know them enough. Or, I don't know. I guess, I guess, blind I guess in, the, in the bonds of marriage, you can't just walk away, right? Mm -hmm. In friendship, if somebody offends you and you haven't built that friendship to the point that you could see that this thing that you did, it didn't sit well with me, and you hash it out and you solve it through, you could say, I don't want to deal with this person again, then you walk away. Yeah. But you can't do that in the bounds of marriage. And so if you haven't really developed what true friendship is, and then and true friendship doesn't mean that the person will tolerate anything. Yeah. I call my friends out and they call me out. Yes. I have become what I am today partly because of my friends calling me out on some of my excesses. Yeah, right? that's right. And so that is what I believe friendship is supposed to be. Yeah. yeah. I used to do this thing and my friends would say it's weird, but for me that was a way for me to know how to improve. So at the end of the year, I will send a survey that those that those that I believe they know me. I mean, what are some based on certain indicators? Then you can do it this answer. year. <laughs> yeah, then look. So you can tell me what to do. <laughs> so you can tell me what to do. Oh, there's a long game. Oh lord. And so I did that, but they weren't like I said, they didn't like it. They felt it was so weird. So no, I no, it's it. not weird. I'm <laughs> giving you. Do it, do it. No, no problem. Yeah, I will. I will send you. I know you are a doctor, so you're not afraid to answer a question. <laughs> Trust him. And so yeah, and I and that and that is one of the key things. Like people don't really understand why people take friendship lightly because. I don't call everybody my friend. I, I I know who is my friend, and so for me to call you a friend, it means that for, it means something to me. And so, yes. but people don't just throw the term loosely, right? And yes. Say, I want to marry my friend. I want to. Yeah. It's a great thing, but is that person really your friend? Person and and the good thing is that if the person even wasn't your friend and you married, like you put yourself That's out there to make friends. Yes. And so there is still an opportunity within the marriage build to the build friendship. that friendship. Mm -hmm. So far as you want to do the work. Yes. But the problem people don't want to do the work. Yeah. You know, like yeah. That's right. You want to call somebody casually as your friend, but marriage would expose you. <laughs> that is not your I friend. guess part of the reason why this stuff you raise is a concern in the, is in, in, in the sense that now again I might be wrong, but I feel I, I think that many believers don't read their Bibles. Mm -hmm. They have devotional books, they mm -hmm. attend church, they go to church, they hear sermons, but all those things are secondary mm -hmm. to reading your Bible yourself. Yeah. Okay. Because why I say so is because if people, individuals are reading their Bible themselves, even if it takes them five years to go through the Bible once, mm -hmm. they're going to come across some scriptures that will stare them in the face. You know, scriptures like say, the one where Jesus Christ says that, in fact, Jesus Christ even washed the feet of his disciples and said, do, do likewise. Yeah. If someone like Jesus Christ, God himself can walk, you know, those kind of, and the other place in uh, Acts 20, 35, where Apostle Paul was speaking to the elders and says, mm -hmm. that it is, as like Jesus Christ said, that it is more blessed to give than to receive. Than to receive. You know, it's like a challenge. It's more blessed to give than to receive. If we start practicing it, some of these issues will just naturally, you know, we'll take, take, take care of themselves. Yeah. But I guess we don't necessarily do some of these things, so yeah. all these issues keep coming up. Well, then there will be some people listening and I will say, because um, like you rightly mentioned, it's, it's, it's the dynamic between them and yes. the woman, right? Yeah. And they will say, in deeper life, or maybe the different yeah. condition that they go to race, say in deeper life there is no opportunity to get closer to even the I will say, I will say it's wrong. I will say it's wrong. Why I say it's wrong is, and that is why I'm very. At times you see the stance I take on the campus fellowship. People mm -hmm. think well, I'm just being hard. Mm -hmm. There's a reason why I take those stance is to shield and create that opportunity for the interaction. Mm -hmm. Because this is my experience. Most of the campus fellowships I've been part of, there is that opportunity. Mm -hmm. For example, okay, we can we can have maybe choir practice. Mm -hmm. After choir yeah. practice, we will hang around. 30 minutes after the yeah. you discuss with people. Yeah. Or maybe if you come earlier, maybe 30 minutes before. That's why you see me, I'm always an advocate of potluck. 
Barbecue. Yeah. Barbecue. Yeah. Because that's where you get people will come eat this course just yeah. free. Yeah. There's that opportunity. And this is where I guess leadership plays a role. Yeah. Because the people in charge of the either youth or the campus mission, those groups should always create this kind of neutral yeah. environment where people can just come together and interact yeah. naturally, not some fully for stuff. So I, I think it's possible. networking that people can do. Uh, there are forums nowadays, you have a lot of forums. I know people, some people don't like online uh, stuff. Yeah, online like stuff is, is, yeah, is it's very easy to go the phony level. Yeah. <laughs> because sometimes it's good to see people, right? Yeah, when you right, see them, you yeah. see the expression, you know what they think, you know that what you've said has tickled the wrong button and they don't like what you said. But you can hide that over the phone and, mm-hmm. and on the internet and behind the, the, the keyboard. Um, yeah, so a good friendship can definitely lead to good marriage, but not um, it's not the um, prerequisite. Like it's not compulsory that good friends will make good couples. And also, um, well, that's a place of also praying to know God's will, right? So praying to know, like, is God leading me to marry this person? Is God leading me? They are my friend. I like them. We understand each other. We're on the same page. But it's, are we on the same page in the sight of? On the page of God, like in the book of God, are we on the same page? God, does God, God that knows tomorrow, does He think that both of us are a good couple? Mm-hmm. Right? So, does He think that, or is there somebody else out there? You, mm-hmm. you, can, you can be good friends and remain just good family friends after the marriage. This stuff you just read so, is a, a, another tricky point in the sense of um, someone praying yeah. and being sure that this is God's will. Because yeah. many things go under that. Label, yes. mm-hmm. will of God, will of God. Yeah. Why I say that is now this one is me personally. I believe that God needs to be different. God must not necessarily show you a vision yeah. or a dream. Yeah. God may already know that you already have the answer. Stay in your face. Are you not looking? Or you are. Or you already you've already said it, and you refuse to listen. Yeah. And God won't say anything. He won't do anything you like to pray fast to tomorrow. So I believe that, like the Bible says, our Father who art in heaven, God knows how to arrange His own things. Yeah. And the question of um, we're talking about the issue of friendship. You know, there's something that I said to one, one of my former roommates, you know, undergraduate. I said, you can't call on your friend until people have found at least one one problem or misunderstanding oh, yeah. or And are you still together? That does it. You people have the friction. Go through it. They're okay. You know, it's okay. It's a special case. Okay, fine. Right. Because I think people get the emotional idea right? that friendship is just you know, goody goody. Yeah, this person understands me. But before I say A, hey, the person concludes the sentence. That's not friendship. But I know. I mean, many... It's a part of it, but it's not. No, no, it's right? not friendship. Because, because somebody's interest, but. I mean, there are two human beings. There is bound to be friction. So course. if you haven't had any friction, then maybe somebody is hiding something. Of course, yeah. <laughs> yeah, sure. You've not got to the point of telling yourself the truth, yeah, but knowing yeah. how you accept it, right? Because there will always be frictions. There will always be frictions yeah. at the point in time in people's yeah. life. Something will just happen that you have to see your, your your thoughts and what you don't like, and the other person might either disagree or agree. Or not even agree, but still feel that they should apologize yeah. because they want to preserve that relationship. Oh, yes. Right. So it's all about somebody has to let go for the other. There's this compromise. There's always this compromise. In marriage, there's always a place of compromise. You just have to, because for this marriage to keep going, it's okay. Somebody has to be the big brother. Like, like it can be the woman sometimes, it can be the man sometimes. But somebody has to be the big brother once in a while you know, for, for the marriage to keep going. So, and then there's this part about, you know, friendship, um, you know, your friends, most times we don't really live with our friends, right, not all the time. So it's always good because you see them maybe once a week, mm-hmm. or even if it's every day, you're still only with them. It's when you start living with people that, <laughs> that you know who they are. <laughs> really. It's yeah. when you live with people. That's when you know they are. Because human beings are called front end and back end. <laughs> front end is what you should. You want to share. Yes. Then there is the back end. So that's when you realize that, oh, oh. 
And yeah. that, oh. that is why you said something about, oh no, was it you that said something about they don't want to live together. Yeah, they don't want to live together. I don't know what it is with ladies. They have that issue. <laughs> we, I call it generally call it women problem. I, 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 there, oh, you what? know their ideogram for trouble in Chinese? No. There's two women living under their roof. <laughs> I'm serious. The ideogram for trouble in Chinese. There's two they're women just, living under just something about it with women. It's just... <laughs> No, okay, if, if they can't even live with their fellow man, they don't want to live with men. No, 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 maybe that will probably change. No, no, it's different. I will no, tell you this. It's just different. I will tell you this. Before I... Because the idea, I have always lived with somebody. Yeah. Like, until maybe 2019. Yeah. Or, no, 2020. And so I was like, if I want to marry, I want to see if I can live with myself. Yeah. And so I will live alone yeah. and see how things sort out <laughs> before, no, before, before, before I marry. Live alone. And so I did live alone mm-hmm. and I realized that, oh, that is, this, it was also addictive. It was going the other side. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and so, yeah, it, it, it's, it's yeah. easy to... No, but trust me, you see it even among siblings. No, you know? right you notice that siblings, there's always something that will happen that you don't agree. Like, no, 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 you don't talk to me like that. Don't talk to me. And, but they still come back to yeah, but, right? but, but what about the person who is introvert and they were like, well, all these talks about friendship is great, but I don't even know how to make friends. How how do? But you know the interesting thing. Mm-hmm. I might be, I might be wrong in this, but I think introverts actually make for the best friends. Mm-hmm. Yeah, they're the best friends. They listen a lot because mm-hmm. since they're introverted, often they listen. Yeah, they don't tell you a yeah, lot about what they but, think. But that will be and some, they're not blunt. That is if they are able to make their friends. Right? But for no. some people, it's hard for them. But to it's be funny. Able. Look, I noticed something about introverts. Most introverts are fine with people that are extroverts. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Because they just enjoy. They just they're just there. They're just enjoying the company. Of, just let them go when they want to go. That's yes, just it. they're just okay, enjoying your company. Okay. On you keep talking. They're there. They're listening. They're nodding their heads like. Mm, I get it. I get it. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, I get it. it. I get it. And that's why most times they believe that opposite attracts. That's what Tim Lahaye says, right? Mm-hmm. That op- this, does it say opposite attracts or yeah, opposite no. temperament? Opposite like? attracts, and after that, the sparks fly. The spark flies. Okay, <laughs> so when they attract, then the spark flies. Oh. What kind of spark? After they attract, now the friction starts. Yeah. That's when it starts. Oh. Yeah. When they attract, it's like, oh, this is the best thing that's happened. Then after they attract, then they start oh, sparking. We are opposite. Then the spark flies. But they still can't live again without each other anymore. That's it. Yeah. Yeah, and then this, they now get to that point of compromise. Yes. Yeah, it's, okay. it's just now, in like the grace of God, God helps yeah. you to to keep going. And so that's why whenever I see couples and people think that both of them are extroverts, I don't believe it. No, they one might, person they, is no, letting no, go no, for no. the other. They might be extroverts, but you know, but it's only skills. Different skills, yeah. And different, yeah. Skills, yeah. Yeah. And different kind of extrovert, extrovert mm. they it's are. Like some, yeah, some people are like, you know, the complete sanguines, and others are like, you know, the choleric, or, I mean, not choleric, uh, sanguine. And colleagues are extroverts, yes. Yeah, yeah but some of them might have some little phlegmatics and the quietness and the uh, ability to let go and the ability to like say, you know what, I don't want trouble, it's fine. Just have your way so that there can be peace. Right? So, in conclusion, well, in summary, I'll say two people that are friends yeah. can definitely have good marriages. A good marriage can, make, can definitely make a good couple. And on the other side, um, they can also become a bad match. Like they can just find out some other parts of each other that they didn't know, and then they are like, "Oh my God, I never knew that you're like this." Mm-hmm. I don't know. You can be this blunt. I don't know that you can really not care about people, and you kind of get to know someone very intimately when you have seen them all naked. When I say all naked, I mean not literally. That means everything about their emotions, everything about all how they feel. You see them every day, right? You see them every day. Every, all of them join, actually. Because when you're living with just a couple, all of them join. You're no more naked. You, are, you can be naked, right? Yeah. You can, and, and, you're not ashamed. But you're just in your natural form. Mm-hmm. You are now in, in your natural state. There's nothing to pretend about anymore. Know, you're not trying to catch her anymore. Mm-hmm. She's not trying to catch you anymore. Yeah, That's just that. me and you. Yeah. Um, yeah. But yeah. I, I don't know about that. I guess the best way to put it is to see someone to an extent because I don't think you can actually. No, you can't. You well. discover your your partner every yeah. day. I mean, seriously, I that is the beauty of. That's the beauty of, of marriage. Of marriage. Really, that, yeah. That, that, you can never say you know someone. Well, that is complacency. Yeah, no, like, you can yeah. really not and know. So the Do you really know yourself completely? Well, you, sometimes you have you some are funny. <laughs> there are thoughts that yeah. come into your mind and you yourself you get shocked. <laughs> <That's> like, <laughs> <laughs> so I can think this. 
<laughs> yeah. And so, yeah, I mean, I think it's the idea of not being complacent, yeah, yeah. even if when you get into marriage or yeah. you're in a relationship, and the idea that you want to put in the work. Because I'm, mm-hmm. I'm so big on the work when it comes to marriage. Because yes. for me, I don't like to keep many friends mm-hmm. because it's a lot of work for me. Yeah. And so then, like, yeah, I, I, I work hard at my friendship and try to keep in touch and stay in touch. and not one-sided i mean that is no friendship like yeah. you understand yeah and so when you get to marriage you're all like oh you don't become complex and you still yes. want to put in the work yeah. and, uh, then it, that, but, yeah then you come also into that place of decision making you have to decide that you're going to build a friendship around this mm-hmm. marriage so mm-hmm. you decide that okay even though we were not friends and we had a short time maybe one year two years to court and we, we didn't we didn't split we went on to marry then we're in this together to make it work. Yeah, and I, I do have. I like do have, we used I, to have this joke with my husband. I'm stuck to you. You're stuck to yeah. me. And, 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 and we're nowhere. And I do have f- two friends who are engaged now. Mm-hmm. That they, they didn't really know themselves. Like mm-hmm. really, but they decided that during this courtship, I will get to know you. Mm-hmm. And they are working hard at it, mm-hmm. trying to mm-hmm. trying to be friends and yeah. make the best of friends. And so far, it's been going on great. Right? Mm-hmm. And so. It's about that decision to say, yeah. You know, this stuff of courtship, I've thought of it and I say, even a six, even a three month courtship yeah. can work. Six months can yeah. work, one year can work, two years can work. I think the problem, the way I look at it anyway, is that people are not truthful. <laughs> because why I say it is that within a week, see, what you can discover, what you can know about someone just within a week. It's enough for a marriage yeah, in the sense yeah. that if you come and ask this person and say, see, yeah, yeah. ask the person and say, how can you describe yourself? Just temperamentally, you know, how you behave, what your life is like. If the person is genuine and truthful, mm-hmm. before the person discusses with you every day for a week, you will get an idea of who this person mm-hmm. is. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I do agree. Because the problem is, people are not truthful. So in t- after two years, you don't even know this yeah, person. And, and, and it's interesting you bring that up. There was a study that I found. If the longevity of courtship translated into it's successful true. marriage and there was no correlation. Of course. Yes. And so it has to do with being open and yeah. sincere with you. Even without seeing that story, I already know the answer. <laughs> it's, it's, it, it, there's no, people are not truthful. No matter how long. You will see someone that, you know, well collected, you think this person has it. No, this person is empty. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Just empty. No, yeah, the fact that you have to be. Because I don't, <laughs> I usually don't truthful. understand why people would. Because I, 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 told, I told people and even myself that the idea that you want to know somebody not because of anything so that you be able to cater to the person very well. Yeah. I told people the fact that I want to know your past doesn't mean that. They want to be. Yeah, it's just because that there will be some level of weaknesses that I, I as a partner, would have to hold up to. And so if I see you exhibiting that, it's kind of prompts me. It's not because I'm gen- I'm interested in what you've done. Mm. If it's not leading me to anywhere, then what is the point? And, but people, when people start to kind of garnish what they've done in the past and they're not very sincere, yeah. then who are you hurting? And so yeah, I, I agree. Like the longevity of courtship, it's the sincerity and what what you tend to discover before the marriage. Yeah. So I think we need to get to that point actually where um, they should be able to be free and they should stop being ju- judgmental. Mm-hmm. You know, people are fond of you know trying to judge people about what they were in the past. And so as you said, and that is very trying to stick into the past. <laughs> like, yeah. So and and, and, and it, it kind of it kind of throws light into the personality of that person that is trying to use your past to hurt you. Right? Mm-hmm. Your past doesn't really define still living in the past and exhibiting the same thing right. that you've done in the past but if you have gotten over your past you've asked for forgiveness you've moved on beyond that and made repair then we shouldn't be like whipping you with, with, the, no. with what you've it's done not, in the past it's, it's right not. we take you by the function like in function of who you are what you represent now mm-hmm. where you're going to mm-hmm. and we, we also want to help you like as a partner, you want to help your partner to be a better version of themselves, right? right? Not to 
denigrate them or pull them down or make them feel less than they were before they married you or where, where they were yeah. they stood up from you are taking them back there to sit it doesn't make any sense like then how are you yeah. how are you thinking of their good you know the bible says the woman will do you good all the days of her life so as yeah. a man, your objective as you get into the marriage is that i want to do him good all the days of my life yeah. and the man should also have that objective that i want to protect her i want to love her with all my heart i want to be the best of you know a husband to her i want to like yeah, and it's very interesting. I know it's, it's it sounds very simple, but because of the complexity of human beings, it's not as simple as that. It's simple. Yeah, but it's yes, very. It's, it's simple when you have people that. Let's start with Christians. When you say when you are when you are a real Christian and you're not trying to complicate anything, it is simple. That's what I mean. Yeah. See, if you are this if you're a Christian that says this. Oh, it's in the Bible now, and this is clear. You, you know, to follow it. it's not. You know, there are some parts of the Bible that might look maybe some mm-hmm. not too clear. Yes. But you've read this one; it's clear, straightforward. Yes. Even if you you don't like it, or you feel oh, will I be able to do this? But as long as it's read in the Bible and it's clear, I'm you just say it. you. It is up for you to say, okay, God help me. I'm going to pray. I'm going to be working on this thing. I must get it. Mm-hmm. The, I think the problem is. At times we think that oh, you know we, we love using this phrase which pisses me off. God understands, <laughs> or the Lord will help us. I'm like, mm. who are you deceiving? You help yourself. God is not your grandfather. God says, do not be deceived. Eh? Mm. Whatsoever you sow, whatsoever a man sow, he will reap it. Yeah. In Proverbs, they say, in every labor there is what profit, profit. positive yes. and negative. Yes. So if you say, oh, I want to get married, or I'm in this friendship and I'm trying looking towards marriage. You better be serious because this place you were talking about in Proverbs 31. Yes. When I read that place, I'm like, oh God, just send me a woman at least that fits this thing. Mm. There's one part that he says that that verse, eh, that verse. Mm. At times when I think of it, I say, if any woman has that quality, that man is a happy man. That verse says that in that in Proverbs 31, it says that the man wouldn't be more or less afraid for any loss. When I think of it, I say, wait, knowing who I am, if a woman can fit just that requirement, I'm a happy man. Women are also thinking of a man that will fit the right requirements. <laughs> no, no, I'm using this example because the least women have, yes. if we bring it and compare it to the least women have, there's no comparison. You people have, that's why it's called laundry list. Laundry list? Yes, it could be 100 points. The man, uh, 10. But that's it. So what, what are you saying? You say a woman is more demanding. Don't you know? Is it today that you know? <sighs> oh, how mercy! We're just women. Which you understand? You see, that's why you see. I'm not even like pushing it. And sometimes the list of a woman, they are always just synonyms. They are just synonyms. It a man be. that is nice, a man that is quiet, a man that is nice, a man that is understanding. What's the difference? <laughs> A man that loves me, a man that cares for me, what is the difference? That's love and care. Yeah, you're the one saying it, but that's not how they are saying Yeah, it. you are saying that the laundry list, but when I read it through and go to your dictionary, they are just synonyms. A man that is responsible, a man that is a man of purpose, what's the difference? Let me ask you. He's a man of purpose, he's responsible. Yeah, you know, but we are, we are, we are, we are, let, let me ask, let me ask you this question. You know what I'm talking let about. Let me ask you this question. Mm-hmm. If it's not self delusion, yeah. why is it that many of those Responsible men, this would say women don't to marry them. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Fredita, what is he talking about? You, you know what I'm talking no, about. No, responsibility is relative. If the man thinks he's responsible, I am telling you, the laundry list of women, at times I even conflict the, the contract, the point. Some of them even are in contradiction. I'm not, has anybody presented anything? Yeah, please ask him. <laughs> I discuss with people now. At least. Yeah. What are the list? For example, give me one of give me ten of them. Let me give you an example. Mm-hmm. <laughs> oh, this guy is not. This guy knows how to talk to me. Now that's one. Do you want, next in the, in the next phrase, you say, "I want a responsible man." Choose one. Why say choose one? Is this? So the, no, 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 no. <laughs> calm down. Somebody can't talk no, to somebody no, responsible. Most <laughs> times, most times, the responsible guys they will talk to you, but not with the finesse. <laughs> Of the players, the players they have the game. They will talk to you smooth, but they are irresponsible to the court. They will show themselves as responsible. Next time we're going to talk about who is a player. Okay, that's the next topic. 
Wait, the thing about time is already off, really. So I think. But but there was something <laughs> that, that you just... mentioned mm-hmm. about people's past that I wanted to mention, like yeah. holding it against them. Like yeah. for me, if God has truly forgiven somebody, who yeah. are we mere mortals to be able to hold it? Yeah. And James says something that has always meant something to me. He says mm-hmm. we stumble in so many yeah. ways. Yeah. And for me, that is why in courtship you need to know. You need to reveal yourself to your, your partner because right? yes. maybe that will probably be the place that you are likely to stumble again. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Like, pro- I think, is it in Ecclesiastes that says that <clears throat> the other can hold the other up? Yes, yes, yes. yes. Two sleep together, <laughs> yes, each other yeah. one, there is yeah. join the other and stuff like yeah. that. And so, that is the beauty of it, I would yeah. say. Yeah. And uh, one last thing before we go marriage is not a battleground. And it's not a competitor. It's not a place to compete. It's not a place to, um, to outsmart the other. Right. So people come in there and they think that they want to be smart. Mm-hmm. They want to amass for whatever things. I don't know. And I, I wonder if mm-hmm. is it that the man or the woman is pessimistic, and they're thinking that I need to secure my 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 base. Secure your base, like. Yes. Yeah, <laughs> some people just feel that okay. Now that we're in this marriage. I need to settle my family members. Oh, or I need to settle oh, my family. Or I need to gather money. I need to make him to put some money up for me just in case. You know? The scripture we quoted there, yeah, will solve that one. Yes. It was more blessed to give than to receive. Yes. To so that, that yes, that's one big problem that people have. And then sometimes they come there with a competitive a competitive spirit. And then another set of people believe that marriage is a place to, um, like, I mean, the man is not. I mean, it's man an it's supposed yeah, to it be might be an complimentary. It's supposed to be complimentary, yeah. and if people have this, um, yeah, as we said, willingness to give, mm. giving not only your body, mm. giving your heart, and really giving it all out, all of your heart, giving, giving, not holding, giving, giving. This is this is a very important Christian, whatever. Virtue. Yeah, giving people. Very few people give these days. Yes, <laughs> they don't want to. People don't want to give. People opinion, are holding. Right? No, are holding so yes. people have. You know, if someone doesn't have, it's honest. So yes. people have, and they don't. It's like their nature. They don't just give. It depends on how people. Because I, I always tell people, for me, I think of money or even any other thing as a tool. Yeah, I don't. It's, very it's not an end for me. Yeah, and yeah. so I, especially my money. When it comes to giving out, and I usually mm-hmm. run into problems with even my, some of my siblings because I'll give money out to help people and be like, oh, you have to also take care of yourself too, as well. Mm-hmm. And stuff. Yeah. And so, yeah, people don't like to give for sure. People are, yeah. we live in a selfish generation. Yeah. Yeah. It's just me, me, yeah. I, I, yeah. I, I, yeah. yeah. As long as people come into this marriage, into, into marriage with the mentality of, what can I do to make him better? What can I do to make this home work? What can I give him? What can I do? Not what can I take? What can I get? What will he give me? <laughs> so once people get to come to marriage with that mindset, it kind of changes the whole um, dynamics of that marriage and people, both parties will be struggling to give, mm-hmm. you know? It just you know, everybody wants to give. I want to give. No, I no, they, they want to give. No, no, let me give you. It kind of changes the whole atmosphere and that animosity and towards even family members yeah. like in laws will not be there. Because <laughs> even if they are hurting you, if you have the mind of Christ through your lifestyle, you heap coals of fire on their head. So people get into really bad bad marriages and the girl yeah. is trying the girl is really trying to give. You see some girls that come into marriages where the home is just and the guy doesn't even have her back and the girl is trying her best to be the best but it, it's not working you know, she's struggling but I, my encouragement to those kind of ladies is that as much as I want you to be wise I still want you to to keep giving of your best try your best to be just be yourself and don't let them change your nature mm-hmm. don't let anybody change who you are mm-hmm. you know and that's the best way to enjoy your life just be who you are give of your own best as God asks you to do and then pray for them and leave, leave it to that and the same thing I said to, to the guys too you know it's not you know you don't have to always think of your own self of your own of me 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 think of all both sides and the fact that you're getting married to another a lady doesn't mean that you she turns your heart against your own family you know just still be yourself still be yourself because at the end of the day we are all a function of 
um, family members and the right. big whole lot. So yeah, so that's the end of our we video ran today. Out of time. Yeah. yeah, we don't out of time. We are going to stop here today, and then we'll see you next week. If God pleases all um, for those people, and don't forget to subscribe. If you've not subscribed, if you have watched this video to this extent and you've really enjoyed this discussion. What are you still waiting for? You know, support us and subscribe so that you can know when we put another uh, podcast or video discussion interaction. You would be alerted. You know, when you you click on that bell below, you'll be alerted that that we've posted another video. And please share your comments. Um, yeah. Share your idea, your thoughts about this topic and any topic that you'd like us to talk about. Any situation, any example, any questions that you have, feel free to put them in the comment section below and. My doctor here and my engineer here. Uh, you're an engineer, right? Yeah. And my yeah. engineer here would be happy to to, to bring. Yeah, he's an engineer, but doctor engineer yeah. to bring you know ideas and bring answers. And I am also here to always bring uh, uh, my thoughts, contributions to um, to these topics that uh, that are coming on. Yeah. So uh, stay blessed. May God give us an answer of peace, and I hope that and you keep holding the fort. Ciao, au revoir.